Welcome to the Church Mag Spotlight. This week, this day, however often we do these things, uh, we have Jared from Buzzsprout. Jared, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do at Buzzsprout. Sure. Uh, well, like you said, my name is Jared, um, and I do all the customer engagement at Buzzsprout. And uh, that has to do with everything from advertising, marketing to customer support and uh, the back end of, of all of that. Um, also, the social media channels. And uh, I've been doing that for about a year, uh, working with Best Sprout customers and things like that. So that's a little bit about me. Um, on the side, I do um, quite a bit of writing um, for blogs or for just personal stuff and kind what of a little bit of writing. writing. Uh, short stories, things like that. Um, I lead a uh, writing community here in Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, yeah. So hard, do a lot of hard writing, more creative writing. And so you are the reason why, or one of the reasons why, Buzzsprout customer support is <laughs> like a delight. Yes, I guess. I guess you could say that because yeah. I, I love doing it. <laughs> it. What was cool recently on one of the church tech communities, someone brought Buzzsprout. They, they plus them into the conversation, and mm -hmm. Buzzsprout was right there answering questions and being awesome. Thank you. <laughs> it's the way to be. Jared, you know, when we had you on the podcast, on the Church Map podcast, before we started talking a little bit, um, mm -hmm. you told me a little bit of history about Buzzsprout. And what was so cool about it is that, that Church Mag decided to have uh, Buzzsprout host the podcast before we knew mm -hmm. any of your history. Because it's not like it's blazoned on your <laughs> website. It's not like, hey, you know, yeah. we're, we're a faith-based or faith-rooted company. We just picked mm -hmm. you because we liked the services and the options that you had to offer. And then as we're talking, it turned out, I, I found out all this cool stuff and I'm like, we have to have a Skype about this and share the news and give people uh, an idea of who you guys are in history. So Jared, tell, tell us a little bit here uh, about Buzzsprout and your history and how you guys came about. Yeah, um, it's actually a really cool thing. And you're right, we don't publicize it too much, but we started uh, back in 2009. Um, we started the product, uh, Buzzsprout, because a lot of churches that were on our another product we have called M Sites, um, they wanted to publish their sermons and we couldn't actually help them very much. Like we could walk them through how to create an RSS feed, um, how to do all of that, how to submit to iTunes, but it was just a really lengthy process for us to walk through them um, or through it with them. So they just our developers were saying, "Hey, there's better. There's a better way to do that, and let's let's do it this way." And so we came up with Buzzsprout, priced it at a very affordable thing, so that the churches that we were working with could afford it very easily, um, and then just started there, um, putting their sermons online, getting them all set up. Uh, so primarily, the first year, it was just churches and and nonprofit organizations that were using Buzzsprout to just get their get their sermons online and get the word out. Yeah, you know, using using your service to get the Church Mag podcast up. Before we were, you know, manually doing our feed, and there were there were some advantages to doing all of that on our own and hosting it on, on our own. Um, mm -hmm. But there were some basic things that we were missing out on. One being some statistics. We were curious how many mm -hmm. people view the podcast, and then there were also some other concerns as far as you know, what if what if a podcast went viral? You know. Um, mm -hmm. At the end of the day, uh, we have to pay for the bandwidth, and mm -hmm. you know that's just kind of your guys' package deal. It's just how it works. And you know, the first mm -hmm. time I used the service after the ridiculously easy process of migrating our current <laughs> podcast over to the Buzz Buzzsprout system, um, mm -hmm. you know, loading up that first podcast, it was really easy. I mean, if you can use Facebook, you can use Buzzsprout. So from that standpoint, yes. uh, it, it it definitely is you know a, an easy thing. Um, right. So, like you said, you know, you've been Jared. You've been working with with Buzzsprout here for over a year, doing their customer relations and stuff like that. Tell us a little bit about uh, the team at Buzzsprout. How many of you guys are working there? Kind of give people a little bit of a, a, a glimpse into behind the browser, so to speak, of who yeah. Buzzsprout is. Nice. Yeah, there's uh, two owners of the company, and we're actually a small web app development company. So it's called Molehill, but we only make um, products, and we only have two or three of them. So we, we manage them on a day-to-day -day basis, and we work on them and, and all of that. So there's two owners of the company, the developer, and a, uh, they're, they're awesome people. Um, and then there's, there's three, of, three other 
employees, I guess. So five of us total in the office. Right now you get to see part of my house um, because I get to work from home most days, which is pretty awesome. Um, but I go into an office and we, and we work together there. But yeah, there's five of us, two developers, two designers, and then myself who I do all the customer engagement. So this isn't, this isn't um, a product that's just been developed and it's just gonna <laughs> live stagnant, but this is something that, that the team actively works on on a regular mm -hmm. basis. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because the trends change, um, technology, technology changes, so even if the Buzzsprout site doesn't look like it's been updated, all the backend stuff is continually worked on so that it, it's better. Right. And, and keeps going, and so that, that's another reason why you know, uh, churches like us and nonprofit organizations, like they can run with us for, I mean, we have clients from the last three years and they don't have to worry about, you know, the changes in iTunes or things like that. Like we work on that stuff. If there's an update for them that they need to do something on their end, we'll let them know and stuff like that. So they don't have to worry about it. And that's, that's a big draw or a big plus for churches. Right. And for your, for your paid accounts, as far as mm -hmm. archives go, you guys hold those files indefinitely. Yeah, yeah. What what we're able to do um, that's kind of unique is we're able to grab all the files, um, and then after nine nine months or so, we'll archive some of your history. Um, and it's still available; it still comes up just as quickly. Um, but because of that, we're able to keep a low cost, and you can stay with us for as long as you want, and, and have all of your archive, which is which is pretty cool. Awesome. Well, I'm glad everyone has a little bit of a better idea of who Buzzsprout <laughs> is. I know a lot of a lot of times. We get lost in the pixels of what a business is and don't really mm -hmm. think a lot. I mean, that's what happened with Church Mag when we approached you guys as far as being uh, our podcasting host. It was just kind of a, a business thing, and we were looking at the techs. And, you know, as Christian techs, you know, we have to look beyond just the tech. And mm -hmm. uh, so it was a pleasant surprise for us to find out that you guys had were faith-based, that you had faith mm -hmm. roots, and uh, that this wasn't just a business to make money, but this was – uh, an endeavor and a project and a business that has been established to to help churches and to mm -hmm. help resource them to make it easy for any church to have a podcast, have it work. I mean, because at the end of the day, that's just what we need. We need something that works that doesn't take a lot of time and maintenance. Because you know, uh, as most tech tech church tech teams know, uh, mm -hmm. getting volunteers isn't easy. So if if a service like Buzzsprout can make it easier, then that's great. Um, before we wrap things up here, Jared, uh, let's put a little bit of spotlight on you. Um, uh, Church, Church Mag isn't all just about tech. We talk a lot of creative as well and marketing right. and something, two things that you are definitely involved with at, at uh, Buzzsprout. So, Jared, mm -hmm. tell us, where can we find some of your writings? Where can we look at do – you, do you have uh, a blog that we can go to to check out some of your creative writing, or is this like in a notebook hidden under your <laughs> Uh, funny you should ask, and I didn't think you were going to do this, but yeah, jaredripkema.com um, is my blog, and I just published an excerpt of a longer story or book um, this morning. So, it, I mean, just literally a half an hour ago, I figured I'd take 400 words of what I've written towards a, a book and uh, put an excerpt there. So you can find it there. Um, there's also a link on my blog to um, a community that I have um, called Left on Mallory is our writing community here in Jacksonville. And uh, from there, I do workshops. Um, so in two weeks, I'll be starting a writing workshop on writing dialogue, which I'm pretty excited about. So the Left on Mallory is a creative outlet I have besides Buzzsprout, which is also very creative. Um, it's just an outlet I, I get to do a lot of creative stuff with. So uh, yeah, in two weeks, we'll be doing that dialogue workshop and I'm really excited because I'm prepping for it and uh, reading a lot of books and writing a lot just so I can, I can get into the feel of it. Awesome. So but yeah. uh, is it possible, Jared, that we might see your name pop up <laughs> on Church Mag, maybe do some, do some posts about creative writing? Definitely. Awesome. You could, you could definitely see that. I'm, I love writing, and I love, uh, I love what Church Mag is about and, and everything, so absolutely. Well, we certainly could use we <laughs> certainly could use some uh, great insight when it comes to creative writing. Um, we don't have anyone necessarily that specializes in that that's writing for us. Mm -hmm. So you are definitely more than welcome, welcome, Jared, to throw your hat into the ring. And one last question. Yeah. Uh, we've we've covered tech. We've covered 
a little bit of creative now. Got a little creative inspiration in the links for people to check out and go read that uh, the, that 400 word excerpt of yours. <laughs> Let me ask you: um, You deal with a lot of customers, and so you deal mm-hmm. a lot with that. It, let me let me ask it. What's probably um, one of the, the greatest challenges or maybe even a tip that you could pass on to those uh, in church tech that deal with vendors like yourself? You know, mm-hmm. I'm sure there's some, there's some obstacles that, that, that pop up a lot. What tip would you give people when they approach tech support? What's kind of your number one, I wouldn't want to say complaint, but one huge inhibitor to delivering a really crisp customer service experience? Hmm, that's a good question. And I just want to say that this Church Mag Spotlight, like so many of them, <clears> they're not pre-rehearsed at all. Uh, you don't <laughs> have a list of questions. I'm just springing this on you. Yeah, no, that's a great one. Um, the way I approach um, tech and the customer relations side of Buzzsprout um, is to not only think about a company, but like me as a personal relationship with my customers. So I sign my name at the bottom of all the emails, and I... I expect people to respond back to Jared or, um, and I really love that part of it. So like not only they're not customers signing in, um, a lot of them are my friends. I've, I've had them contact support. I mean, if you're in church or if you're in tech support, you know that you have your, your 50 people who just love to talk to you. Um, and I, and I love writing back to them. And so I approach it from a relationship standpoint, each email I send out, um, during the day is a, is a relationship builder with, with the person on the other side, not, not a customer, not a client. It's a, it's a person on the other side. Um, there are many times where I actually listen to their podcasts, um, and I enjoy them and, uh, yeah. So, so that's how I approach it because if I don't approach it that way, um, I do get upset when the same question comes in over and over again, or, um, you know, it just doesn't seem like the person's getting it on the other side. Uh, they're not understanding what I'm trying to say. Part of that is a reflection on me. I need to learn how to write better um, in my emails, but also just it's just a point where, you know, hey, they're a person. They're wanting to use our software, which is amazing um, in the first place. Uh, and so I want to build on that relationship, um, and that, that's how I approach it. Only a true writer would, would say, I need to learn how to write better. That's incredible. That, that pr- probably was more profound than you meant it to be. Uh, I think that that is huge, Jared. And uh, I deal with some customer support with uh, one of the products that that I have, and uh, that is that is such uh, a great tip. And you are absolutely right. And I think that when you are approaching a vendor, you know, as as a client, if I'm a client and I'm approaching a vendor, that if my mentality is approaching it as a relationship that that can really change the dynamic as well and i think that that is a huge tip that those that are serving in a customer support capacity and those that are uh engaging with customer support that's a huge thing to keep in mind this is a relationship you know and as christians ultimately that's what all this comes down to is relationships and if we can't uh, be a reflection of Christ in 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 our relationships with tech support. Then, come on, we can do mm-hmm. better. So, great tips, yeah. Jared. Thank you so much Please. for being on this Church Mag Spotlight.